This is the B2C2P2 higher class paper 1 run through. Remember you have all these equations at the front of your paper, use them um, when you're doing calculations for your questions. So first question is in the biology section. Read this article about mammoths. It says mammoths were large elephant-like animals that are now extinct. The bodies of more and more mammoths are being found preserved in ice. This is because the global temperature is increasing. This is melting the ice caps. Some people suggest using mammoth tusks instead of elephant tusks as a source of ivory. Uh, they hope that this will stop elephants from becoming extinct. However, they know that this is not a long-term solution because this source of ivory is not sustainable. Mammoths are now extinct. Some people are worried that elephants in Africa might become extinct. Suggest one way that preventing extinction of elephants, elephants could benefit people that live in Africa. So uh, you could have any of these three, uh, well, two really, more tourism, you could say it generates income, or you could say more employment. Um, or you could have an example like there'd be more safaris. Um, but you can't put stuff like you'd have more ivory or uses for elephants like tra transport or work has to be to do with uh, making money. Some scientists say that the idea of using mammoth ivory instead of elephant ivory may help elephant conservation. It's just why this idea might help. Um, so that's because it's to prevent or reduce poaching or hunting or killing. Um, so that's your mark there. The increase in global temperature is melting ice and exposing the dead mammoths. Many people think the increase in global temperature is due to increased carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. Explain how increased carbon dioxide levels could lead to global warming. So any two of these, you've got to say that um, the sun's rays or radiation or infrared or heat pass through the atmosphere, that'll get you one mark. Um, you then say that the carbon dioxide stops or reduces the radiation from passing out into space. Um, and you could also get a mark for saying because uh, the carbon dioxide reflects back the radiation or the heat or the infrared. So any two of those three will get you those two marks. Mammoths and elephants are thought to have descended from common ancestors. Elephants have much less hair on their bodies than mammoths did. A scientist called Lamarck had a theory that could explain why mammoths had long hair. Lamarck's explanation was that mammoths lived in cold climates. This made their hair grow longer to keep them warm. This characteristic was passed on to their offspring, and over many generations the mammoths developed long hair. Lamarck's explanation is now thought to be incorrect. Explain why it's thought to be incorrect. Um, again, two marks. Or any two of these, you could say that uh, the acquired characteristics do not have a genetic basis or can't be passed on. Um, you could say the hair length is controlled by genes or DNA. And you could say that the hair cannot be grown longer by mammoths when it's cold. Um, so any two of those three things. About 50 years after Lamarck put forward his theory, Charles Darwin suggested an alternative theory called natural selection. How would Charles Darwin's theory explain the long hair of mammoths? Three marks here. So first mark saying that some animals are born with or have longer hair. Um, and then the second mark is saying that those with longer hair were more likely to survive. And the third mark is saying that they will then re reproduce and pass on their gene for long hair. This next question is a six mark question, so please could you look up the mark scheme online on the Google site um, and mark this yourself. If you're unsure whether you've marked it correctly, then please ask your teacher just to check it over for you once you've marked it. Next question. Buffalo are herbivores that live in Africa. Buffalo feed on grass. Yellow-billed yellow oxpeckers are small birds that live on buffalo. and Yellow-billed oxpeckers hunt for live ticks that feed on buffalo. The ticks feed on buffalo blood. Write down one reason why a pyramid of biomass of this food chain may look different from a pyramid of numbers. Um, so this is only one mark. Um, so this is the idea that ticks are smaller than buffaloes or that many ticks feed on a small number of buffaloes. Either of those will get you that mark. The ticks are parasites of the buffalo. What does the term parasite mean? Um, so two marks here. So um, first mark saying that it lives off um, or lives on the host or a living organism. And the second mark is saying that it, does, um, that it causes it harm. Um, so lives off or on or in a host or living organism causing it harm for the second mark. A different species of oxpecker lived in another part of Africa. This is the red-billed oxpecker. It also lives on buffalo. A scientist wants to investigate whether buffalo also benefit from the red-billed oxpecker. He counts the number of ticks on six buffalo. He stops red-billed oxpeckers from sitting on three of the buffalo. Red-billed oxpeckers are allowed to sit on the other three buffalo. After several days, he works out the change in the number of ticks on each buffalo. His results are in this table, so you can see that you've got the buffalo with red-billed oxpeckers and the change in the number of t ticks 
on each buffalo after the experiment and without the red-billed ox peckers as well. Discuss what the data show about any possible benefit gained by the buffalo. So two marks here. Um, so you could say that uh, there's no or little benefit from from having or not having oxpeckers as the average change in numbers is the same for both groups. If you add them up and divide by three, it's the same for both groups. Um, and the second mark is for referring to the limitations of the data. So it's difficult to reach a conclusion based on only three buffaloes. Um, <clears throat> so that will be those two marks. Buffalo often have small wounds and sores on their bodies. Uh, the scientists also look at the effect that red-billed octopegas have on these wounds. So there's your table. Work out the missing percentage in the table. So the percentage is the number of wounds that heal in percentage. So you've got the number of wounds that heal here and the number of wounds that do not heal. So you need to do a percentage of this based on all of them. So the first thing you'll do is add these two together. So it's 49 plus 55, which equals uh, 104. And then a percentage of this based on that. So it's going to be 55 divided by 104 and to make it a percentage times 100. So 55 divided by 104 times 100 is 52.9 percent. If you put um, 53, then that's fine, but you can't put 53.0. That would not get you that mark. That's incorrect. Describe the results of this experiment and suggest possible explanations. So... Um, Three marks here. You could say a buffalo with oxpeckers have more wounds. Um, you, could say, you could say that buffalo with oxpeckers have a lower percentage of wounds that heal. And you could say that the birds might be causing the wounds or keeping them open or feeding on the blood. Um, you could also say that more wounds heal than do not heal, regardless of whether they have oxpeckers or not, because wounds, uh, they naturally heal. Explain why the two species of oxpecker do not occupy the same ecological niche. Um, and that's because they don't feed on the same thing, or only one feeds on ticks, only one feeds on blood, uh, or because they do not live in the same area. Any one of those would be fine. Okay, on to the chemistry section. George is researching information about construction materials on the internet. Look at his results. There they are. Which material will be the most scratch resistant? So the most scratch resistant is the one that is um, the hardest. Okay, so you're looking at the relative hardness here. So the one that is most scratch resistant is granite, because it has the highest hardness. So granite, um, so it's two marks, so one for granite, and then one for saying it is the hardest. Next question, look at the picture of a girder bridge. Which material will be best to use to make the girders of this bridge? Choose from the table and explain your answer. Um, so... First mark is saying steel, and the second mark is saying because it's the strongest. So steel has the is the strongest one on the table. And then marble, granite, and wood are materials that can be used to make kitchen worktop. Describe the advantages and disadvantages of marble, granite, and wood for making a kitchen worktop. Use information from the table. So it's really important you do that. You have to you have to use information on the table, not stuff that you think yourself. Um, so. You get a mark for listing one advantage and one disadvantage for any one of the materials, or for any, sorry, for any of the materials. So you could say that advantage for granite is that it's hard, a disadvantage for wood is it's soft, so that'll score you one. Um, then you've got to link the property with the use. So you could say, for example, granite or marble is hard and scratch resistant, and um, wood is soft and not scratch resistant. Uh, and the second, and the third mark is giving a second link of property with the use. So granite is hard and scratch resistant but wood is soft um, so the idea that the hardness is linked to how, how scratch resistant it is is what you get you all those three marks look at the diagram it shows how ammonia is made in the harbour process unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen are recycled explain why so it's just that it reduces costs um, you could say it saves the starting materials, you could say it improves the percentage yield, you could say it increases the sustainability, or you could say to make sure nothing is wasted. So any of those will get you that mark. Look at the graph, it shows percentage yield of ammonia at different temperatures and pressures. What is the percentage yield of ammonia at 450 degrees and 400 atmospheres? So this is the 450 degrees line, there's three lines, one, one for different temperatures. 
So there's 450 degrees, and then you're looking up 400 atmospheres here. So you're going to look up for, up to this line, then read across. So that is 36%. Then it says, look at the graph. What con conditions show on the graph give the highest yield of ammonia? So it's going to be the highest pressure, 600 atmospheres, and the lowest temperature, which is 350 degrees. So he's looking at the the graph and getting getting the highest point on the on the lines. Ammonia is manufactured at 450 degrees and 150 atmospheres using an iron catalyst. Explain why these conditions are used. So there's three marks here, so it makes sense for you to talk about each one of the conditions in turn. So the catalyst is used to speed up the reaction. That'll get you a mark. If you talk about the temperature, you've got to say that it's too slow or slower at 350 degrees. Um, and a higher temperature decreases the percentage yield. So you've got a, the idea of an optimum temperature there. If it's, if it's lower than that, then you've got... Um, sorry, if it's higher than that, then it decreases the percentage yield, and if it's low, lower than that, then the reaction is too slow. So you've got to say both of those for the temperature point. And then the third mark is talking about the pressure. Um, so the very high pressures are expensive, um, or you could say that lower pressure would decrease the percentage yield, so one of those would get you that third mark. So to get three marks, you have to talk about each of these conditions in turn. Jade and Philip are making fertilisers by neutralisation. Complete the word equation of neutralisation. So this is acid place is it makes a salt plus water. Jade and Philip want to make potassium nitrate. Which acid and which base should they use? So there's two marks, one for each one. So when you've got a salt... What you do is first take the first word, so potassium, and then all you've got to do is put hydroxide on the end, and that will give you your alkali. And then the second word, nitrate, is based on the acid, and you've just got to know the different acids and what they make. So nitric acid is what makes nitrates uh, for salts. Jane and Philip also make ammonium phosphate. The formula of ammonium phosphate is that. What is the total number of atoms in this formula? So you've got three lots of all of that because the three is on the outside of the bracket so you've got one times three n's so three n's you've got 12 h's you've got one p and you've got four o so total you've got 15 16 20 atoms so this next question is a six mark question please can you mark this yourself and then ask your teacher just to check your marking um, if you're unsure whether you've marked it correctly. And this question underneath, geologists study the structure of the Earth. This is not an easy thing to do. Explain why. So any two from saying that the crust is too thick to drill through, you could say that the, uh, the temperature increases as you go through the set, as you go towards the centre of the Earth, or you could say that scientists need to use seismic waves or shock waves to study the, to study the inside of the Earth. Could also say that uh, get, say that no one has dug all the way to the mantle, uh, or you can't get deep enough, or you can say it's too hot inside the Earth. And we're into the last section, uh, physics section. So Amrit spends a lot of money on her electricity bills. One of her appliances is an iron. Amrit uses the iron for the 0.5 hours. Its power is 1500 watts. Electricity costs 18 pence per unit. Calculate the number of kilowatt hours used by the iron and how much this will cost. So the number of kilowatt hours is just going to be the number of watts um, in kilowatts used. So that's in watts. You need to turn that into kilowatts. So it's going to be 1.5 kilowatts. Time is by the number of hours. So that's 0 0.5. So that gives you 0 0.75 kilowatt hours. And then each one of those costs 18 pence. So you're going to do so that's 0.75 for the number of kilowatt hours. And then the pence is going to be 18 times 0 0.75. So that equals 13.5 uh, pence. And that gave you all three marks. So there's two marks for getting that right and one mark for getting that right. Amrit has a fan heater. It has a power rating of 1955 watts and a voltage of 230 volts. The fuse in the plug states a maximum current of 13 amps. Amrit wants to find whether the fuse is suitable. Calculate the current in the fan heater. So, to work out current, you do watts divided by voltage. So, 
or rather um, power divided by voltage. And so that's going to be 19,000, sorry, 1,955 divided by 230. So that equals 8.5 amps. Amrit decides to change to off-peak electricity. Off-peak electricity has advantages for producers and consumers. Write down one advantage and one disadvantage of off-peak electricity for Amrit. So an advantage would be that it's, um, it's at a lower cost. Um, and a disadvantage, any one of these, so you could say it's available at inconvenient times or it's just inconvenient. You could say they can only use appliances at night. Um, you could say that another meter is required or extra wiring or um, time switches for the storage heaters. And you could say that the daytime electricity can be more expensive than, than non-off-peak users or there's an extra standing charge. Um, I would imagine that most of you said that it's inconvenient, i.e. you can only use the electrical appliances at night for that disadvantage. Um, and the advantage in that is that it's cheaper. Lower station, uh, power stations produce electricity 24 hours a day. Producers sell off-peak electricity. This increases their profit. Explain how using more off-peak electricity can benefit energy supply. So just one mark here. You could say either that um, you could say that the it evens out demand or it avoids spikes in demand. You could say that electricity can't be stored, so it's not wasted. You could say that you don't have to switch off power stations. You can keep them running con continuously. Um, you don't have to run or build more power stations. Um, you could say that you're reducing waste electricity or energy at night. So any of those, get you that one mark. Most scientists agree that the greenhouse effect causes global warming. However, other scientists agree about the causes of global warming. So, sorry, other scientists disagree about the causes of global warming. It says the changes in the climate that we've seen are due to a natural cycle, humans not to blame. And then the other scientists say global warming is caused by humans with increased the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Suggest reasons why scientists may disagree on the causes of global warming. So two marks here, you could have a number of different points. You could say that global warming has happened before human race um, was around. You could say that other natural events in the past may be responsible. You could say that some scientists have an economic interest in supporting or disregarding the global warming. You could say that there's difficulties, difficulties in collecting data or there's variable average temperatures. You could say there's different interpretations of the data or evidence or results. You could say there's conflicting ideas or different data, evidence or results. You could say that it's difficult to tell what greenhouse gases are naturally made or man-made. Um, you could say that volcanoes may be responsible. Um, you could say there's no definite proof either way. Um, but if you just said there's no definite proof, that wouldn't get you the mark. You have to say either way to get that mark. So any two of those. The next question is a six mark question for physics, so please mark this yourself. Ask the teacher to check it if you're unsure whether you've marked it correctly. Energy, electricity is generated in power stations from the energy stored in fuels. Fossil fuel power stations burn coal, oil or gas. Look at the energy diagram of a power station. Calculate the efficiency of the power station. So um, all you've got to do here is look at how much is wasted. Uh, look how much is used usefully. So electricity is the useful energy. The input is 500 and the useful is 180. It's going to be 180 divided by 500 times by 100, turn it into a percentage. And that would be 36%. If you didn't times by 100 and put 0 0.26, that would also get you both marks. That would be fine. The power station engineer thinks the power station could be made more energy efficient without increasing electrical efficiency. Um, suggest how the efficiency of the power station could be increased other than by generating more electricity. So, two marks here, you could say that um, you can recycle the waste heat or energy, so I'll get you one mark. Um, but if you said something like, you can use the waste heat to warm homes or buildings or to heat the power station, that'll get you two marks. If you just said that you can recycle the waste heat, that'll get you one. But if you say how it can be recycled, that'll get you the second mark as well. Final question, nuclear radiation can be both useful and dangerous. Three types of nuclear radiation are alpha, beta and gamma. Look at the table about nuclear radiation, it is incomplete. Complete the table. So for alpha, you can put smoke detector. For beta, you can put thickness gauges or thickness control and uh, stopped by a few millimetres or centimetres of aluminium. Um, you could also have smoke alarm instead of smoke detector. Um, you could put treating cancer for beta. Um, and you could say sheets of a thin aluminium or metal. Uh, you could say steel or lead. 
um, or thick or a few centimetres of card or wood as well, actually, for the beta. So one mark for each of the gaps. Radioactive materials have to be disposed of safely. Um, some high-level nuclear waste from the power station is in liquid form. The nuclear power company want to bury the liquid waste underground. Explain the risks of doing this. Um, so any two of these, you could say that it leaks into, could leak into water or rivers, lakes, sea water supply or drinking water. You could say it could enter the food chain or food supply or it could be transferred to or taken by living organisms. You could say that it causes mutations or increases cancer risk. Um, in animals or humans, you could say that it remains radioactive for a long time, um, or you could say that um, it could change radiation levels in the future. Um, so any two of those. So please add up your marks, add it to your poster, and try the next paper, please.